homeless when you were 12 years old? Ah, oh, not since I was 12 years old. What does being homeless mean? Having nowhere to go, no home. Like your parents kick you out and you ain't got nowhere to go, so you're stuck sleeping in the alley somewhere. Which is what you did when you were 12 years old? Mm-hmm. Street kids are not a recognized part of our well-regulated and monitored society. They don't fit, and there are few institutions tailored to meet their needs. <laughs> Youth in Transition, or YIT, is an experiment in reaching out to kids who have been sidelined by our society. It utilizes a unique style of casework which emphasizes both patience and being willing to go all out for someone. People keep that professional distance, so to speak. It's because you know what? It hurts sometimes too damn much to get too close. But I think, you know, before I die, I'd like to see professionalism re redefined or at least broadened. And it's not the, well, we discussed our shit for 45 minutes. Uh, come talk to me later. You know, you can't make an impact in the lives of these kids that we work with every single day if you don't get close, if you don't step over what they call professional boundaries. And I really, really resent the fact when uh, many professionals, whether they like me or not, have actually slammed me over the years. I talked about how I have no boundaries. How long Seems does to Stephen be a, give you a little slight trust? Oh yeah, it took us a while. It took us like how long? Four or five months? Mm -hmm. And then still, even with all these fucking serious I don't trust any of them. Yeah, so it's One day Donna came early. over with a box of food and I mean like yeah, I love <laughs> she came in and her hair was like all disheveled and she had a cigarette in her hand, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you know, just like more foul mouth than anybody I'd ever met. And you know, like that's beauty, you know? <laughs> she was just like, and I'm looking at her and I didn't know what to think. I'm like, are you kidding me? This woman's bringing us a food box and, you know, still a little skeptical. We're closed! Um, and it wasn't immediate, right? The change does not happen immediately. But then it turned into like, Donna was more of a friend than any kind of like an advocate or a caseworker because, you know, she was able to like hang out. She wasn't, she didn't have that like look of disgust that most people had, you know? She was like, they're in it. Yeah, she was like, she was just there and she was very real and she didn't have any, you know, like she shared with us, you know, like I told her this happened to me and she'd say, you know what, this happened to me too because Donna was on the street when she was a teenager. We're going to Casey Hospital to see a, a kid named Stephen that was admitted last night uh, for, because he was really, really depressed and harmful to himself. Next to me. And you depressed thanks to you? No, uh, uh, admitted. Yeah, he called, uh, you know, for help for his friend. So right now his friend was a little bit mad at him because Ryan here actually cared that his friend lived or died, but he'll get over it. <laughs> okay, well, just bring this to him. How do you know? Pretty sure. He won't wear, they were in his back? Well, they're dressed past it. It's actually I think mostly the kids in YIT kind of um, need more of a like support and caring rather than a lot of structure and discipline because usually they don't really um, react too well to a lot of strictness or anything like that. So Donna really like takes care of us more with like feelings rather than actual, I don't know, like guidance counseling or something like so that. So this is where it's like it's a really slow process as far as with Donna but it works because even when I wouldn't tell anybody else where I was Donna knew you know even when I tried to think that nobody else knew I was strung out Donna knew about it and when I told her about it she didn't tell me how horrible that was you know she told me 
I love you and I'm concerned that you're doing something like this because I know that you're hurting yourself, but no matter what, I will always be here for you. And she lived up to that, you know, like when other people turn their backs on me, even with good reason, she was there, if for nothing else than to feed me and to hold me. And um. Charlie was a friend of my daughter's and he was 22 at the time and he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Nobody would take him, nobody would help him and, and I called, I heard of Youth of Transition, I called Donna, we spoke to her about four or five times, but Charlie needed a lot more help than Donna could give him because he was real, the mental illness was really bad at the time. She was the only one that offered any help for this young man. We called all over, and you had to have a referral for this one, for the doctor, and Donna said, come let him hang out during the day, because all he was doing was sleeping. Th this kid, I called the state of New Mexico one time, because she's 12 at the time. I said, you know what, she needs to do something about this. This kid's out on the street. Well, she has to be in immediate danger to herself and others. I'm saying, well, let's see. She's being raped. She's being drugged. Uh, she's hungry. Well, she's not in immediate danger to herself or others. It's like, that's what they say. That, that's what the uh, mental health system um, will tell you, number one. Number two, I, uh, <laughs> uh, the state of New Mexico is reluctant to get involved. Uh, they don't even respond the first time I call them. But the second time, uh, they came down, they investigated, they brought her uh, to her mother's. And um, uh, of course, to the state of New Mexico, they presented themselves as just a family with, you know, a young, you know, preteen or almost teenager that has some problems. And, uh, they're, they're wonderful, glowing people, you know. Don't mention, mention the horrible things that go on behind closed doors or the fact that when they get tired, you know, of the kid, they just dump her back out on the street. So I'm really, really, you know, even the few times I've tried to ask the state or get the state involved to help a young person, they don't do their job, you know? Well, she doesn't have a bruise on her and the mom says everything's great and there was, uh, you know, some meat and bread in the refrigerator, so all's good. You know what? A normal 13-year-old doesn't go ha hang out on the streets and then after they've been raped, okay, and all sorts of other horrible things have happened to them, and they've seen all sorts of horrible things happen to them, you know what, they go home and they stay home. You know, if they've got any kind of resemblance of a normal family, you know, she's back out on the streets a couple of days later, there's something wrong in that family. Youth in Transition is a place where street kids can go during certain daytime hours. They can get showers, they can get a meal, it is a place where they can receive mail and an address so they can receive social services. Okay, Ryan, quick rubbing it in. <laughs> <laughs> like, ha ha. Yeah, like, ha ha ha. Yeah. LA, Los Angeles. The volunteer staff is there to yeah. keep a responsible eye on what takes place at the center but also to help in a variety of ways, ranging from giving a ride. Uh, we're making do, catching buses, blocking, you know, hoofing it, same as always. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been giving you rides? Rides, and we'd usually go out and talk, and I have no one to talk to the same way I used to. Youth in Transition faced a serious crisis in February 2003, when its director, Donna Rowe, was charged with conspiracy to murder one of her staff and conspiracy to burn down her own center. I don't know any, I have not talked to anybody who thinks there is any uh, merit or truth to the charges against Donna. And the board is convinced that uh, that's part of a long city, I'm tempted to say vendetta, against youth in transition. Uh, but from what little we know, we see this as as uh, charges that maybe some police believe, but that have no grounding in actual fact and truth. Um, we had um, a number of incidences at the center where uh, the police 
responded and we got little or no cooperation from Donna or the admi other administrative uh, people that were down there in our investigations. And it was uh, well known that we were not welcome at that center. The police and neighborhood associations have expressed their concern over the legitimacy of the Youth in Transition project since its inception. Confidentiality is really, really important to these kids. And you know, they, they have no place to live. Half of them are throwaways. That's what I call them. To have a police officer walk in, that scares the kids. And, and they need to have that confidentiality. Charges against Donna were based on the testimony of one individual who was facing serious drug trafficking charges. That person had a meeting with Donna after he had kidnapped and threatened one of the center volunteers. The meeting was closely observed and monitored by plain clothes police. They arranged for the informant to wear a mic, which was recorded by a video camera shooting from the parking lot. When the videotape was released, it was apparent that they had taken what Donna said out of context. understand what this tape really means. Uh, I think the judge understands that this case is not as cut and dried as, as uh, it appeared originally from this affidavit. I'm furious about the affidavit. And I believe that uh, we should uh, immediately begin preparing for uh, a motion to dismiss the indictment based on a misrepresentation in the affidavit. The one that wore the wire. And he, What's your impression of him? He's a, he's a drug dealer. He sells pot. He, uh, Why would he do something like that? I figure what happened is, <laughs> I was going to say he's crazy, but yeah, that too. But um, I figure what happened is he got in some trouble and is trying to get himself out. And hey, look, I got somebody, you know, she's trying to have somebody kill and she's trying to burn down the building. If I give him, rat this person out or, you know, make up some kind of story on this chick, maybe they'll, they'll let me go, you know, let it off light on me. That's what I'm thinking. To tell you the truth, I really do. Because he, I'm talking about when he, he sold a lot of drugs. The a case is pending in the courts, but the bond, <laughs> which was originally set at $1 million, was reduced on May 15 to $150,000. By that time, Donna Rowe had spent two months in the psychiatric ward of the city county jail. I, I hope that what I came out with was a few more friends and alliances. Um, I do want you guys to know that, like Mr. Shana said, I'm innocent, totally, totally innocent. And um, I really want you, and, and Seamus is a good contact for that, to continue to watch the case as it unfolds and to watch truth unfold. Uh, it, it's going to be pretty neat. I'm really, nine times out of ten, I'm excited about it, and then the other tenth, I'm scared to death. But um, I, I'd like that, and I got this from jail, and it kept me happy. And it kept me comforted. And thanks for that card. When I despair, I remember that all through history, the way of truth and love has always won. There have been tyrants and murderers, and for a time they seem invincible. But in the end, they always fall. Think of it always. And that was from Gandhi. Thank you. If we're talking about um, um, teenagers or we're talking about young people or homeless, it comes down to this. Who would you rather um, to uh, mentor young people? Service programs like Youth in Transition who can get them in contact with educational programs, housing programs, services to be able to take care of their um, feeding needs, to be able to get in contact with a number of other programs that young people most definitely need. Or we're going to be able to put them in jail or leave them on the street to be mentored by drug addicts um, pimps um, to mentor by people on the street who don't have the children's best interests at heart. And the situation of Donna is not going to go away because everybody who's any what politically active or concerned in the city knows that if they can do this to her, they can do this to anybody else. And that's why there's so much support for her and people are concerned about it. First two weeks, you know what they called me? The, not even my name. First two weeks. The, if one of the girls wanted to talk to me, because I was like hardcore, I was going to stay to myself, I wasn't going to talk, 
I wasn't going to get involved. I was not going to care because compassion got me here and, you know, hell if I was going to go there again. Well, the first couple weeks, they called me dictionary because I guess I was the only one that could spell in there. And, um, but then I started talking to people and I started to get to know them and I started to love them. And then to some extent I was able to work from inside of the jail when that's exactly what I had told God in the first place. I'm not working in here. I'm not doing anything in here. And I wound up doing his thing in there. Thank <laughs> you.